Welcome to the academyofworship.org. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be talking about a special D chord. Well, we're going to be talking about a bunch of chords, but we're basing it around a single hand position on the neck, and I call it the special D chord. I'm sure there's a real name for it. I haven't figured it out. I don't really want to. This shape is going to be used anywhere that you need to add some interesting sounds to chords that you're already playing. So for instance, today we're playing in the key of G major just for demonstrations purposes. But you can capo on your guitar, whether it's acoustic or electric, and use this anywhere you want to because it's it's mysterious sounding. It has all the right notes to perk up your ear until it makes someone listen to what would normally just be a, a really boring chord progression. In this case, we use the chords G major to E minor to C major to D major then back to G major, and then we start it all over again. This isn't something you're gonna use all the time, but a lot of times you just need to add a little something to a really plain acoustic guitar that's playing maybe, uh, or maybe there's a breakdown section, and you can hit any combination of the notes in these chords. You don't have to play it just like I did. Sometimes just a few of the notes out of those chords will add just enough of a beautiful dissonance to the chords that are already being played around you that it'll sound really, really cool. So let's show you what I did. Everything is based around your ring finger and your middle finger, okay? So these two fingers are the ones that are gonna hold down this anchor of this special chord. And the reason I call it a special D chord is because you may have seen this chord. So you basically have, you, a lot of people play it this way if it's just a D, but essentially it's just a C major chord that you've slid up to a D. C major, you slide it up to D. Now, if you play these just as is, don't play the low E just like you wouldn't on a C major. You can play the high E if you want to, but you get this sound. That's how you get that chord shape. But in order to do what I'm going to teach you today or to be able to use this technique, you're going to want to use your, your, again, ring and middle finger down here. So you're replacing your what would normally be your middle finger and your first finger on the C major shape with these two fingers, okay? That frees up this finger to do a bunch of the lower notes. And then when you go to this D right here on the A string to form what was originally that C major shape, that's how you do that. So it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. This isn't something you can just pull out without practicing it because this, this low, this D down here with your pinky can take a little bit of practice to get the strength down there if you don't have it. But what you're doing is you're keeping this shape right here, the lower part of that C major shape that was right here, these two fingers, you're not moving those. You start with a G right here on the low E string on the third fret. When you just let it up, you have your low E and you just you play that. And then you just put this down on the C, which is right underneath that G you just did. So on the A string on the third fret, and then you move your pinky up here to this fifth fret on the A string to the D. But these two middle fingers do not move. If you ever need to create an interesting chord sound based on the one, the four, the five, or the six, you can even do this with the two chord. So in the case of being in G major, you would play an A minor chord, but in this case, you wouldn't move those two fingers and you just play an open A at the root. All I did was play this low A and then just keep my fingers where they are. You can play any of the normal chords in the key, but just keep those fingers rooted down there, and you get some really cool, interesting chords that play well with other instruments. So if you have an acoustic guitar player that's just fretting a first position G, something low and easy, you're still near them in the register, but because those note choices are different than theirs, you'll really hear it. Now this works really well with uh, a good amount of ambience on it, so some delay and some reverb. And if you also swell using these chords, you can get some really cool bloom effects with these chords that just sound eerie and beautiful. That's it. Those are the chords. Try them out at home. Try them the next time you're rehearsing with your band. See how they fit with what people are playing. And remember, you can capo and move that shape up and down based on where your capo is. Thanks to everyone who is tuned in to this channel. I see a bunch of new people coming in. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the thumbs up if you thumbs up. 
If you hate it, hit the thumbs down. Please comment. I'd love to talk to you guys in the comments below. Head over to academyofworship.org. I've got a free gift over there that I hope will bless you. Merry Christmas, everybody.